So you started a new role as a controller or a manager of accounting, and one of your first tasks is to record an allowance for doubtful accounts. In this video, we're gonna look at example with numbers and step-by-step -step instructions on how to calculate. So a quick agenda for this video. Why do we need to record an allowance for doubtful accounts? What are the methods used in the calculations? And toward the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to choose a method of calculations and what audit support you're going to need. Let's go. Okay, so if we're going to talk about allowance for doubtful accounts, we're gonna to have to start the story from the beginning. When a company sells goods or services, they usually do so on credit, meaning they issue a customer an invoice and they collect the cash on a later date. So let's say the company issues $1 million worth of invoices at a given month. Do you think it's reasonable that the company will collect the entire $1 million worth of invoices? Well, that is, shall we say, doubtful. And that's why we have to record something called allowance for doubtful accounts. There are two main reasons why we have to record an allowance for doubtful accounts. One, it is required by US GAAP, so it is a compliance step. And number two, it does help you manage cash because it provides you with a realistic view of your collectible accounts receivable. I have to mention here that if you're selling goods or services for cash or credit card and you're collecting on the spot, you don't need any of this because cash is king and you are killing it and you don't need to worry about any allowance for doubtful accounts. Now let's dive into the three most common methods of calculating the allowance. The first one is percentage of credit sales. The second is a accounts receivable aging. And the third is risk classification method, which sounds a little bit fancy, but trust me, it's really simple. And I'll show you here in a minute. So when we're looking at the allowance, we're dealing mainly with two accounts, allowance for doubtful accounts and bad debt expense. The allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset account on the balance sheet, and it reduces the accounts receivable balance um, to its estimated realizable value. The second is bad debt expense, which is an expense account on the income statement and it recognizes the estimated uncollectible debt as an expense all right so jumping into my desktop here we're looking at method number one of the calculation which is a percentage of credit sales uh, what we have here is the income statement for spa booker for the month ending november 30th 2023 and all we need is the revenue figure uh, knowing that all of our sales for the company are on credit meaning these are credit sales we issue an invoice and collect the cash and at a later date. Uh, so my revenue for the month is 283,560. And what we are saying here is that based on prior year, we've written off 5% of our invoices. So we're saying, okay, we'll take this figure and multiply it by 5% and we'll get 14,178. And that's our estimation for the allowance. Uh, so we'll go ahead and record the allowance journal entry, which is a debit to an expense to recognize an expense on the income statement for 14, 1178 and credit and allowance for doubtful accounts which goes on the balance sheet in the asset section reducing the balance of uh, accounts receivable for the same amount 14,178. So this is method number one as a percentage of credit sales. Let's jump into method number two. And by the way, this file here is gonna be attached to the description of this video. Go ahead and download it so you can take a look at the calculations that I'm doing here. Uh, method number two is um, AR aging method. For this, you need to download an AR aging from your software. So if you're using NetSuite or QuickBooks or whatever you are using as an ERP, you need to download a most recent AR aging and you go ahead and look at it it will you know usually has a current section and then a section for aged accounts receivable here so what we're saying here in this uh, method is we'll assign a probability percentage based on history for the company so uh, what i'm saying here is for the current balances i'm going to assign one percent i'm going to say one percent of current balances is uncollectible based on history. Uh, and for invoices that are aged between one and 30 days, I'm gonna say 5% of those is uncollectible. And then as you see, it goes higher as a percentage as the bucket of aging goes up a number of days. And then I go ahead and I just multiply uh, my balances, the current times 1%, the age 1 to 30 times 5%, get these numbers and add them all up and I'm getting 5,000, uh, $5,804. 
I'm going to use that to record my um, allowance for doubtful accounts, the same journal entry, debit to bad debt expense, and credit to doubt, uh, allowance for doubtful accounts. So this is my second option here. This is the second method to calculate the allowance. Uh, let's take a look at the third method, which is using the risk classification method, which does the same thing. It looks at uh, the AR aging, so the same schedule that we downloaded before, uh, but instead of uh, assigning the probability based on the aging, I'm gonna assign the probability based on the risk. So I'm gonna assign a risk between low, medium, and high to each of my customers. And then I'm gonna say for the low risk customer, the probability of not collecting is 1%. So this is by looking at which customers have been problematic in the past and assigning them a profile, low, medium, and high. And then you say for the uh, low, it's 1% chance of uncollecting, and then 3% uh, for medium and 6% for high. And then I go ahead and calculate the figures by multiplying my total times the probability, and then I sum it all up and I get 8,027. Um, again, the journal entry is debit to bad debt expense and credit to allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so this is all good, but so far, all of this is an estimation, a reserve. I'm just creating an allowance on the books, reducing my accounts receivable balance and booking an expense. But what happens when a customer actually is defaulting, right? Like what happened with the pandemic, when some uh, businesses went out of business and you're having to write off an actual invoice. What would be the journal entry for that? Let's take a look. So remember in method number two, when we recorded the allowance based on a probability based on current and aged AR, we recorded a allowance for doubtful accounts for $5,804. Now, we got some information from one of our customers. We received a letter in the mail saying that they are getting into chapter 11 bankruptcy and you were not gonna be collecting on the invoice. So this invoice is outstanding for $4,000. $899 and you can see it up here in the aging schedule for customer amazing skin LLC. Now we know we have concrete information. We're not collecting that invoice. So what we'll do is we will debit the allowance for doubtful accounts, which we had credited here when we um, established the allowance. We will now debit it, reducing that allowance and we will credit accounts receivable, writing off that balance from our accounts receivable. Right, so that's the journal entry when you're having to write off an outstanding invoice. Awesome, so, so far we calculated the allowance for doubtful accounts, and then later we got some information that the customer is not gonna be paying us, and we've written off the accounts receivable. Let's say after that you got more information that the customer is back in the game, right? And they give you a call and they say, we're back in business, we'll pay you the invoice, that's the reason to celebrate. So now you need to bring back the accounts receivable on the books. Let's take a look at how to do that in a journal entry. So previously we set up the allowance at 5,804. Uh, subsequently, the customer sent us a letter saying that they will not be paying the invoice. So we've written off the invoice for 4,899. And then later we get another call saying that they're back in business and they wanna pay us the invoice. In this case, we need to set up the accounts receivable again. So we will debit accounts receivable to establish the invoice again and credit the allowance for doubtful accounts for $4,899. The entire process for accounts receivable and the allowance is covered in detail along with the month end procedures and the full accounting cycle in my Control at Academy Online course for which I'll leave a link down below. Now, as far as choosing a method for calculation for your business, what's important is that you choose a method based on what makes sense for your business and based on your knowledge for your customers, and then documenting your approach to the calculation for the allowance and an accounts receivable policy. This policy should be about two to three pages in length, and it needs to cover the following aspect. Your process for evaluating customer credit worthiness, the types of payment terms you're offering your customers, the method you choose uh, for the allowance calculation, and the criteria for which you'd write off an invoice. I hope you got a lot of value from watching this video. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now and share the video with one of your friends who would benefit from watching this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.